What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here, back with my quick and dirty guide to chaos. Now we are on to the cruisers. The cruisers are where chaos is pretty up there among the most confusing factions, and where people are more likely to get lost. This is in part because of all of this variety with five different ships, but also because of their fragility. Now if you remember from the first episode about chaos, I said that they needed a little more finesse, and this is kind of exemplified by the cruisers. They are far less forgiving than the good old tanky, shooty cruisers of the Imperium and the Orcs. Hopefully I can make these ships a little bit clearer, but this video may be a little bit longer as they do require some dissection, I suppose you'd say. So first up is your Slaughter. Now this is an interesting little ship. Despite being a cruiser, it has a blazing fast 240 speed. That's right, this cruiser is as fast as many light cruisers or even escorts. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually make for a particularly good kiting ship because of all its weapons being only 9000 max range. Obviously enhanced by, uh, by the lock-on skill, but that's true of any weapons for all ships, so I tend to ignore that. Anyway, instead it has the role of something like a cavalry ship. Use it to flank, hunt, and obliterate light cruisers and escorts which have no chance against its fairly high DPS output, or maneuver it into lines of fire where it can't be hit. You can quickly get behind, say, an orc ship, and it won't be able to do anything about it because you move so damn fast. The biggest black mark against the slaughter is that it's, uh... It's 240 speed kind of comes at too much of a premium. This thing is too damn expensive, coming in at 187 points. It is only 3 points cheaper than the Hades, and frankly, the Hades can out-DPS it pretty significantly. So if you need a sacrificial frontline ship, I think there are better options. The only reason that the Slaughter, however, isn't a top-tier pick, as speed is highly valuable, is this cost. I would personally wait for, I don't know, at least a 5 point reduction in its cost before running too many of these things in one fleet. Now, the rest of the Chaos Cruisers all have a standard 200 speed, so we don't really need to consider that point any further. On to the Carnage, my personal favorite of the 5 Chaos Cruisers, and I am not the only one. All Carnage fleets have been a staple of the multiplayer for a long time and remain viable today. Now, the Carnage is a 100% macro ship. All macros, not a single lance on it. A little bit surprising for a Chaos ship, but there it is. Now, it does have them all rated at 1800 points, except this mid range macro, 13, 18,000 rather, 13,500 macros. That's fine. Granted, the effectiveness of all these macros does fall off with range because of the accuracy malice, so you do need to keep it in lock-on to uh, get the effectiveness out of that. But it is still considerably better than having those really, really short-range type weapons that were present on the slaughter. Uh, this thing can also output really, really mean DPS at a conservative distance, and get even meaner if you pop reload and get into a close range brawl. In terms of DPS, the Parnage is about on par with the two heaviest damaging Imperial cruisers, but with the speed of Chaos to boot. As with all the Chaos cruisers, caution is of course warranted, because they are very fragile, and I will keep saying this, but the Carnage can certainly brawl with the best of them in the cruiser tonnage. Now, the Murder is also a, I don't know, a bit of a strange ship for one main reason, and that is this thing over here, the Lance Artillery that is featured on the front. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> this means, once again, that its weapons cannot fire in the same direction as each other. This is compounded by the fact that the Lance Artillery actually replaces the turrets. This is the only cruiser that doesn't have any turrets, and thus lacks constant DPS that they provide when kiting, running away, so on and so forth. Some would actually argue that the Murder can technically out-DPS most of the other cruisers, and do in fact spam all Murder fleets. Now, this may be true on paper, 
but in practice it's a little bit different. To have all of the murderer's weapons, and keep in mind that it does have the 13,500 macros instead of the 18,000 ones, anyway, to keep all of its weapons firing simultaneously, you need to actually have ships in three directions. That's kind of iffy in my opinion. You could also jig it side back and forth kind of to let the uh, macros on the broadsides fire and then to let the lance artillery fire back and forth over and over but if you have a lot of ships frankly you probably don't have the time or the patience or the attention to do that kind of thing at least i personally don't so yeah if Generally speaking, I'd say if something isn't firing, it's pretty worthless. While there is definitely a use for these things, and by things I mean lance artillery, en masse when, say, rushing an enemy or sitting in a cloud before entering a brawl, or even chasing a damaged ship, I mean, you will probably be, probably be chasing Eldar or some other fast faction at some point, I don't know, I still think the turrets can do it better. One other use is that if the murdered that the murder does have that the other ships don't is or the other cruisers don't is that if it survives an engagement you can use its speed to get away and keep firing with that lance artillery even if your macros have been all critted out and just keep firing from a distance it does transition into a sort of second line sniping ship that way but doesn't often happen because once again chaos cruisers are so fragile that they uh aren't as likely to actually survive a brawl. All that aside, the fact that the DPS falls off heavily unless you orient this ship perfectly is a major mark against them and leaves them a bit more situational, in my opinion, than the Carnage. Next up, uh, I have a riddle for you. What do you get when you bring hell twice over? You get the devastation. In all seriousness, the Devastation is essentially two the two marks of Hellbringers stitched together into one ship. It brings both of the long-range sniper lances and the launch bays of both of the two light cruisers. It also has turrets like both of them. Let's take a look at this thing as well. Uh, yeah, it has turrets like both of them, but there is one difference. These are short-range turrets only rated for 9,000 units, and not particularly useful on a sniping carrier that should never be taken into close range because it will absolutely get wrecked. Do not be fooled by the fact that these turrets are close range. This thing is not a combat carrier, but a true carrier, and it will suffer if all of its stuff gets critted out, it should be staying at range and played essentially like the light cruisers. That said, these two turrets are basically the only mark against this boat. Now, older opinions against the Devastation were that it was not worth bringing. But as the game has evolved, this cruiser has actually been lowered in cost several times, making it considerably more viable today. While the light cruisers are both fantastic at what they do, I've already noted this, there will be times when you get considerable mileage out of bringing a devastation over a light cruiser and an escort. Especially because it can do both things that both of the light cruisers can do at once. Now, this makes it a pretty strong contender, in my opinion, in the cruiser lineup at its current cost. However, do keep in mind that the Devastation is a support ship, not a lion ship. This is not a carnage, and it's not a murder. You will not win by bringing a full fleet of these damn things, whereas you may very well win by bringing a full fleet of those others. These guys are best used as snipers with added fire support, and are often found supporting Asheron or, De or uh, Desolator Lance fleets, or basically any other fleet that needs a pretty solid support cruiser. Finally, we have the Emasculator. The new kid on the block, and as is often the case, the new kid is a little bit weird. What stands out about it, as many people have pointed out in the comments, is this uh, AT3 front armor. This is the only ship in the Chaos Fleet that can boast this, so it can mitigate damage to its front as it approaches, and appears to be at least somewhat designed to ram. Unfortunately, unlike Imperial ships, if we take a look at the ship specifics, it does not actually possess the ramming spur that the Imperial ramming ships have, 
and that's kind of a shame. However, it does at least provide for the possibility. I cannot really fault anything that provides a different tactical option to a faction that completely lacks it, so it definitely gets points there. However, its tactical options are kind of limited due to its fairly garbage weapons loadout. I mean, it's got two short-range lance batteries, and A, I, I despise short-range lances. They There's no point to them. <laughs> I can rant about this thing on and on, but there's absolutely no point in them because they get so heavily outgunned by macros in close range, and they have 100% accuracy. These are range weapons. When you bring them in close, they're... You, Alright, that's enough of that. Anyway, two short-range lances, we got mid-range macros on it, and a couple of short-range turrets as well. Now, I will admit that all of these short-range weapons do make a lot of sense for a ramming ship, but this is at a higher cost than the Carnage. And 177 over 174, with less DPS output due to the lack of range and the partial lance use. In my opinion, it is too expensive for what it does, and there are better options. I very much expect the devs to actually drop it in price, or in a fleet cost, at some point, as there is little likelihood of you taking it over any of the other cruisers. Thus, in my opinion, it is a situational pick. So to conclude, you have a lot of choice for your cruisers, but I personally recommend the Carnage due to its flexibility in determining the range of engagement, being the second cheapest cruiser after the murder at 174, and outputting Dominator levels of DPS. Definitely the best bang for your buck on the Carnage. The Devastation is also a pretty good choice, it is a great support ship that you can include in your fleets as needed. Otherwise, the murder the cheapest. It's a pretty good choice for those with really good ship orientation and micro skills as well as attentiveness, and the slaughter for those actions per minute demons who want an incredibly fast glass cannon. Next up we are going to move on to the battle cruisers, which share most stats with your regular cruisers, but do outshine them to a surprising degree. This means that their cruiser comparisons, or I don't know, rivals, whatever you want to call them, do have to be kept in mind. Once again, remember to support your friendly neighborhood heretic with a like and a comment, and thanks for watching.